Good evening, and welcome to worship to our Holden Evening Prayer Midweek Lenten Worship um, this Wednesday evening. I'm so glad you could all be here. I hope those who were uh, in small group discussions had some really meaningful conversations tonight. Um, I want to say another word of thanks for everyone who contributed to dinner. There are There is a little more soup left over, and it's been packed up into some t- takeaway containers. Um, so if you want to take some soup... After um, the service tonight, there is a little bit more soup uh, in the kitchen. For anyone who was hoping to have something to hold on to tonight, we do have a few more of these bulletins, but um, everything you need for the service should be on the screens, and you should be able to follow along, sing to your heart's content. Now let's take a moment to enter into this space to welcome the Spirit and to worship God. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And shine within your people. my prayer.
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Tonight's reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, the fifth chapter. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes, and when, when he had stepped out of the boat, immediately a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He lived among the tombs, and no one could restrain him any more, even with a chain. For he had often been restrained with shackles that he broke to, with sh shackles and chains, but the chains he wrenched, wrenched apart and the shackles he broke in pieces, and no one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always howling and bruising himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed down before him. And he shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he had said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? He replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. He begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there on the hillside, a great herd of swine was feeding, and the unclean spirits begged him, send us into the swine, let us enter them. So he gave them permission. And the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine, and the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and were drowned in the sea. Now the swine herds ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then the people came to see what it was that had happened. They came to Jesus and saw the demoniac sitting there, clothed and in his right mind, the very man who had had the legion. And they were afraid. Those who had seen what had happened to the demoniac and to the swine reported it. Then they began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by demons begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus refused and said to him, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Here I was, sentenced, you might say. A life sentence, not of my own doing. Something, someone, some power had taken hold of me. And that was it. My people would have nothing to do with me. I was shunned, banished, expelled, naked, and chained. Yet all of the chains I broke. Let me tell you about my life. 
and how I came to wear these chains, what it was like to be an outcast from my own community and my own family. I cannot remember when it started, but I must have been about 13 years old. I would do things, things that would upset people. I never knew why I did it, but I couldn't help it. As time went on, I developed a reputation as a troublemaker. People stayed away from me. No one wanted to be my friend. And if they did, their parents often told them they couldn't spend time with me. It's amazing how easy it is to get into trouble when everyone expects that that is what you will do. I was blamed for just about everything that happened. People said I was demon-possessed. Others said I was just evil, but what did it matter? Nobody wanted anything to do with me. And before long, even my own family turned their backs on me. People would stare at me when I walked the streets. One day, a group of fed up villagers found me on the edge of town. They were gonna teach me a lesson. So they grabbed me and roughed me up until I couldn't even stand. They left me there to die, feeling good that they had done everyone a favor. This is how I ended up here. I dragged myself to one of the caves, the tombs, along the Sea of Galilee. Here I was, living, if you could call it that, among the dead. This was my home now. Nobody, and I mean nobody, would have anything to do with me. They were afraid of me. I can see it now, but then, it was all out of my control. There I was. I mean, there we were. <laughs> oh, you're wondering what I mean by we. Well, there was one of me, that's true, but there were many of them. The demons, that is, within me. A legion of them, 5,000 or more, tormenting me so much so that I could no longer help myself. They had me right where they wanted me. Then one day, following a powerful storm, I saw a boat in the distance. It was coming toward my shore. Nobody ever came here. People knew about this place, and they stayed away. The boat landed, and a man stepped out. Just one of them though there were several in the boat. Immediately, the demons took hold within my body like I've never felt before, and I ran. I rushed toward this man, flailing and shouting wildly. When he sternly and loudly spoke a word to me, with his calm, unaltered presence. Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. I dropped to the ground and shouted, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I am desperately asking you, by God, do not torment me. Jesus then asked me my name. And from within me came my reply. My name is Legion, for we are many. A legion was an army of over 5,000 Roman soldiers. And this is what it felt like inside of me. Soldiers marching, ordering, wrenching me day and night. But no, I couldn't bear the thought of a change. I begged Jesus to leave me alone, to not send my demons away. They had become who I was, and I was determined to hold on.
My demons, however, knew that a power greater than them was before them, and they were terrified. So they sought a way to preserve themselves, manipulating their way as they always did. Send us into the pigs, they shouted. Why would Jesus listen to the demons and grant them their request? I wasn't sure, but he did, and into the pigs they went. But what I saw next was unbelievable. Jesus was not done with them. With another word, he ordered the demon-possessed pigs to run off the steep bank and into the sea. And they did, to their death, drowned. What was this? What was going on? I felt calm, faintly remembering this feeling from years ago before my life went out of control. I didn't know what to think or what to do as I had just witnessed firsthand all of these things take place and all of it with just a word from Jesus. And now what? was free, free from this bondage, unchained, unbound, not by my own power. Those swine herders, though, you should have seen the look on their faces. They took off running. They ran back to the village to tell everyone what had happened. And everyone in turn came running back to see.
Fear seized them all. What kind of power is this? And who's next? What does this mean for us all? Get this man, this Jesus, out of here. This is too much. This has gone too far. But I, I didn't want him to leave. I wanted to go with him, the one who had changed my life. But it was not to be yet. He directed me back to my own people to tell them, Gentiles like myself, no less, just how much the Lord had done for me. And I am here to tell you, too, that this same Jesus, who took what I could not handle and did with it what I could not do, has found you and comes to you with the same mercy that he gave to me.
great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God create our bless us and keep us. May Christ be Peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of Christ's peace with one another.